So now we move on to the uh, finale fireside uh, insights. Um, and I don't think he needs much of a, an introduction, but we'd like to welcome Tipsy Academic Director and Founder, um, Johan Schott, um, who is Professor of Global History and Sustainability Studies at Utrecht University. His research, along with Professor Ed Steinmuller's launched the consortium and continues to inform the co-creation principle at the centre of it. Johan works across all Tipsy experiments and describes Tipsy as a cognitive space for inspiring and creating transformations. He is central to the European Institute of Technology's Climate Knowledge and Innovation Community Project, Motion, of which Tipsy mm. is a partner. Um, and he's joined by his um, colleague in that, Christian Matty, who is Transitions Hub Lead at Climate Kick. Christian works at the Science, Policy and Practice Interface for Innovation and Sustainability. He's been coordinating the Motion Project and he has a lot of experience of working together with academics on the sticky topic of co-creation. So Christian and Johan, Welcome to your um, Europe-wide fireside. Um, I know you're going to be discussing what co-creation really means in practice and why it's so necessary for transformation. So welcome, over to you, Johan. Thank you, Geraldine. Um, and welcome to uh, Christian, of course, on my behalf. Uh, Christian, uh, Perhaps the first kind of opening question, can you uh, tell a bit more about your work and also why you were interested as the lead uh, leader of the Transition Hub uh, to work with Tipsy? Thank you, Johan. Um, so my, my work is trying to, to find actually um, in a space where uh, we can bring new knowledge into the um, policy arena. And um, we are trying to uh, facilitate this kind of exchange in terms of um, an organization that is trying to promote systemic transformation and um, it's in Europe. So we have to deal with the kind of the multi-level governance of Europe, the cities, the regions, and the complexity. And the Transitions Hub is actually trying to embrace that complexity rather, rather than running away because we do have business people, managers, and uh, we need to convince them that they need to embrace complexity and make something with that in order to solve problems. And for doing that, you cannot uh, just work in, in a cycle but doing the same things. And working with science and with academics is a way to bring uh, new ideas and new elements to think in a reflexive way and, and to move forward and trying to avoid working in silos or working in the short term. So that is what, what we do uh, uh, in the Transitions Hub and what we have been doing in the last five years. And that's why we, we are interested in working with Tipsy because there is this kind of different pillars about experimentation, research, evaluation that work together in, in terms of opening a new space on, on, on bringing science to, to policy making. Okay, thank you. Perhaps you can give some uh, practical examples. Uh, you know, in Tipsy, we work on uh, the idea that we have to overcome transformational failure and we have introduced the idea of that a theory of change approach could be useful uh, but coupled with transformative outcomes and i know you have been trying to uh, work with this a bit in practice and uh, can you tell something about that experience yes actually um our main challenge right now in terms of what is happening in europe regarding um, new um, multi-year framework uh, funding framework is trying to understand how you put things together and something that we have been doing in the last years is exploring some countries like Slovenia and Bulgaria to put things together so um, especially with topics like circular economy and it's kind of very attractive to use transformative outcomes to uh, 
to explain in very simple way what is a transformative process in countries that do not have an expertise of having cabinet meetings. So they do not know how to work together. They just work in silos. So they really need to start to understanding the kind of process that they need to activate to create that transformation. Uh, and how to make it practical, it means that those process lead to some kind of transformation at many different levels, not just at, at the ministerial level, but in terms of how they relate with industry and society. So that is what we are doing, is like using concepts as uh, synonyms of probably what means shielding or circulating or brokering uh, to make them understand uh, that they do not have any kind of uh, um, alternative way. They need to work together and they need to also work in a different way. Uh, and for doing that, we need to say, it's not about new practices, it's not about new tools, it's about activating long-term process to change things and you don't know what is going to happen. Uh, so then the idea of policy experimentation actually is, come, is, is part of that, explaining well, experimentation is a process that you need to activate to generate new things. So that's the way that we are trying to translate the transformative outcomes in terms of the challenge of transforming the policy making in practice. Okay, thank you. Well, we have been uh, working together in the so-called Motion Project, which is a sister project to Tipsy, or Tipsy is a sister project to Motion. Uh, depends how you see it. But uh, can you talk a bit about your own role in this? Because you know, in this project, we also have practitioners and uh, academics. And uh, well, how would you describe your own role in this process? Well, that's a good question, actually. It depends on the day I could be a facilitator or can be a sheriff somehow, okay? Because there, and there are many people here from Motion Project that know, like Jenny, for example. So um, Motion is an innovation project and all the partners are academics. So I really need to let them know that the results of a project like Motion is facilitating potential services uh, in the future to facilitate monitoring and learning activities in cities or regions. So part of my facilitation and sheriff role is trying to, to make them understand, for example, that there is a transformation of knowledge with the, the other projects that are involved in terms of something that will become something practical that everybody can use. Uh, so there is this kind of, uh, and we have many uh, discussions on that with you, Johan, about the translational research approach that could be very popular in, in medicine, but we are using this in social science. And this involves people like Jenny, for example, that is a tipsy observer here, but having a very important role in terms of communication to practitioners, how you create narratives that uh, allow people to understand process in a more simple way. So that's part of my role is trying to activate this kind of elements like, for example, communication or producing practice-based knowledge that can be used as kind of a practical tool in the future. Okay, I think in a discussion we had, uh, we defined co-creation as negotiating meaning. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's a kind of uh, nice uh, expression because it does mean that uh, understanding matters. Yeah. Understanding influences action uh and i think uh and i think that's uh, the kind of role on both sides is is to and that's also what was happening in the vinova project in in a way so we were negotiating meaning of transformation uh but you uh in that discussion we also discussed that co-creation should not stop with design it's really about implementation yeah. so co-implementation and, and and you had some uh, critical remarks I remember about researchers. Yeah so uh, um, I think there are, there are one distinction that, that, that first I can do but it can take longer that is the difference between co-design and co-creation and for the Nordic countries this could be very attractive when I give the example of smart specialization strategies 
on the entrepreneurial discovery process. Everybody can and should design a strategy in the European Union, but implementing a strategy is a different way. So for me, co-creation means uh, getting dirty in making things happen and goes beyond prototyping and conceptualizing things. Um, and the point about negotiating meaning is that also about what does it mean actually for the researchers, providing a, reflecti a reflexive space in the implementation stage as well. How the, the academics can understand that they need to work with other uh, actors like uh, um, people with expertise in communication, sorry Jenny, but for example like Jenny, or people that are more used to work with practitioners in a different type of setting to make sense of what the academics can bring in different stages. It's about a competence kit that is not fully uh, um, um, how can I say, a monopoly of academics to do policy, okay? So we need to understand this kind of different logic and also negotiating meaning in terms of learning. You, you are talking this, this week about second order learning. So it's about how you use language and you use narratives in a different way as part of a process that goes from design to implementation and evaluation and so on. And that means negotiating meaning about the transformation that you were not expecting as well. It's happening all the time for us when we work in terms of in introducing systemic approach in countries that are just used to have a top-down approach like in the east of Europe. Uh, and you need to negotiate what means experimentation or a policy mix uh, in order uh, for them to not be afraid of, of, of those concepts. But would you accept it? Because for me, as an academic, when I participate in design or implementation process, in a way, I want to be myself. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an academic who's interested in concepts and ideas, and I want to, I see the participation in the project as my research. Uh, and I'm happy to contribute, of course, and listen to uh, the policymakers, but I also expect them to be happy to, you know, try to understand my ideas and concepts. I think there is a point there about that you need uh, um, sometimes to, to identify that the potential curiosity and willingness for having solutions from the practitioners needs to be stimulated. Because if they want to work with you all over the process, you need to make something with that curiosity. So you need to create a dialogue that is useful for your curiosity and for their curiosity to have a, um, a kind of a learning process. Um, for example, the, the curiosity for them could be uh, related to use new methods or understanding how to use data. And this is an amazing space for the researchers, but you cannot use your typical skills to awake that curiosity. You need something else uh, in order to, and that's part of a negotiator, not just of the meaning, it's negotiation of the time and the collaboration. The win-win situation is based on these people that have different interests and motivation. And um, uh, there is a lot of curiosity in practitioners to bring new stuff to what they do. But you need to dance with that rather than trying to, to do what you do as a researcher every day. So that's the kind of the competence mix that we need to explore when we work together. Okay, well, thank you for uh, that. Uh, these thoughts. I really like your last uh, metaphor, dancing, because uh, in another conversation, I think it was part of the Finova uh, interview that uh, Diana did with me, I described uh, the relationship as two dancing partners. Uh, so uh, we can dance the tango or the salsa or another, uh, or another one. I, but, think, uh, I feel like I need to interject here, Johan. Okay. <laughs> Because you're afraid you will be invited to dance or <laughs> well you know my thoughts on that but there you go um do you have any other uh, comments that you want to um put out there christian i mean the the message around making sure that there's a competency kit and um i like the fact that on different days you put on different hats of being translator facilitator communicator and sheriff I think we'd like to to see that um, 
so yeah was there anything else i think um um it's it, it could be very attractive to think not in terms of this kind of bipolar roles of the practitioner and the academics but in terms of the ecosystem of actors that needs to be there in order to make it happen okay um so um i just put the role of sherry for myself and i consider myself someone that do apply research okay but without the managers that i have or people that work in communications or the industry or business that help me to understand that this is less useful than these kind of things uh i cannot bring what I bring to the collaboration with DeepC. So I think we need to expand a little bit about the different type of actors and competence that needs to be there to make this kind of um, transformation and science and practice happen. It's not about two actors. It's about more than one. Uh, it's about different type of competence. Uh, if you do not have this kind of uh, competence diversity kit, it's going to be very difficult to advance or maybe capitalize the investment that you are doing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Christian and Johan, for that final uh, finale. Um, some excellent ideas coming out of that that we can all contemplate tomorrow. Um, embracing complexity, not running away from it. Um, Yes, so I think we've heard that co-creation takes a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of commitment um, and a lot of funding um, as well. So to reframe our challenges, to find our way back from being lost, um, as we've heard. Um, and one of the things has been empathy, seeing that being able to be open to other people's perspectives and seeing um, the positions from which they are coming from. Um, we've heard that co-creation depends on trust between partners um, and building trust is essential um, to be able to navigate through that uncertainty. Um, and we've heard the relationships today that have been built up um, across the TIPSI team between the Nordic region and um, globally as well. So, both sides having trust means that they can have faith in the process um, and to understand each other's intentions towards activating long-term processes for transformations. So tonight's been an excellent example of all that and I really hope that you've enjoyed it all as much as I have.